Today we will perform a steady state thermal analysis using hypermesh and optistruct. This will involve the finite element modeling of conduction and convection interfaces along with thermal contacts. We will perform thermal analysis on a sub-assembly of engine exhaust system. The element fluxes, temperature gradients and grid temperature results will be visualized during post-processing. Let's get right into it. The link for the CAD model used in this video is provided in the description. Feel free to download the CAD and follow this video step by step to get a better understanding of the thermal analysis setup. The first step is to define a thermal material and property for the components. Let's take a look at how this is done. Once the geometry is imported in Hypermesh, two components are visible in the model browser, the bracket and the pipe. Let's start by creating a new material. Provide a name to it. To define a thermal material in Optistruct, the mat 4 card image is used. K is the thermal conductivity in watt per millimeter degree Celsius. Cp is the specific heat of the material in unit per degree Celsius. Rho defines the density of this material in ton per millimeter cube. H is the free convection heat transfer coefficient in watt per millimeter square degree Celsius. Duplicate this material and rename it. Now we will enter the thermal properties for aluminum. Consistency of units is very important in hypermesh. Here we are using the unit system Newton millimeter ton second. Now create a new property and provide a name to it. As we are using solid components, change the card image to P solid. Now assign the cast iron material in material selection box. We will duplicate this property for the second component. Now select the aluminum material in material selection box. Let's assign these material and properties to respective components. For the bracket component, select the cast iron property in selection box. For the pipe component, assign the aluminum property. The material gets assigned automatically. We can now start with the meshing process. Open the tetramesh tab from 3D panel. Switch the radio button to volume tetra. With entity selector on solids, select all the solids in the model. We will set the 2D type to R triads. Turn on the curvature and proximity based refinements. Now enter element size as 1. Enter minimum element size as 0.2. Lastly, switch to mesh to solid component. Create the mesh. Let's switch to shaded elements option to visualize the mesh properly. Now open the nodes tab from geometry panel. Using the arc center option, set the entity selector to lines. Now select these two edges and create a center node. Now we can start setting up the thermal boundary conditions. The bracket will be loaded with a heat flux input at its free end. A thermal contact will be defined between the two components. A convection interface will be defined on the inner wall of the exhaust pipe. CHBDYE elements are used in Optistruct to define thermal boundary conditions. Let's take a look at how these elements can be created at required locations. Create a new group and provide a name to it. Make sure that the card image is set to conduction. Click on the secondary entity selection box. Let's change this option to add solid faces. Now select these two faces of the bracket component. Add them to the group and return. CHBDYE type interface elements are now created, which will be used to apply the heat flux in next step. 
To specify heat flux input through this conduction interface, create a new load collector. Now open the flux tab from analysis panel. We will use the by collector selection criteria to select all CHBDYE elements from conduction group. Let's use flux magnitude as 0 0.1. Create the flux load. Let's hide this load collector for now. Now we will define the convection group using CHBDYE elements. To start with, let's define the ambient temperature. Open the constraints tab. Now create a new load collector to store this ambient temperature load. Select the temporary center node. Now deselect all degrees of freedom. With load type as SPC, click on create edit. The D field specifies the temperature value. Let's set the ambient temperature to 15 degrees Celsius. Exit the constraints tab. Now create a new group to define convection interface. Change the card image to convection. Open the extended secondary entity selection panel by clicking on it. Let's select these solid faces of the pipe component. Add the faces to the group to create CHBDYE elements. Now select the material as aluminum. To connect the ambient temperature to this convection group, we will use the card edit option. Switch entity selector to elements. Now set the configuration type as slave 3. Let's use the by group selection criteria to select all CHBDYE elements from the convection group. Edit the card. In the TA1 field, select the ambient temperature node. This will link the convection group with ambient temperature specified by the temporary node. Exit the card edit panel. Now we need to define a thermal contact between the two components to ensure conduction of heat. We will use the contact browser to define this contact. The contact browser can be enabled using the view panel in the ribbon. Let's start by creating a contact property to specify thermal properties of the contact. Enter clearance value as 0. Now check the box next to P Cont THT. KOHTC specifies thermal conductivity for the closed contact. Let's enter this value as 0 0.1. Now select the two components and right click. We will use the auto contact option. Change property option to use existing property and select the contact thermal property in the selection box. Create the contact. As you can see, one contact is created. Let's change the discretization option to node to surface. Now review the contact. As we want the bracket to be the master component, we will use the swap main secondary option. The thermal contact is now properly defined. To couple the thermal boundary conditions, create a new load step. Change the analysis type to heat transfer steady state. In the SPC field, select the ambient temperature load collector. In the load field, select the flux load.
Now press Ctrl F and search for the param card. Add it to the model. We will set the check L option to no to skip the element quality check before running the analysis. To extract thermal and flux outputs from the run, add the global output request card. Check the box next to flux and set format as H3D. Do the same for thermal results. The analysis setup is now complete. Let's save the model in a separate folder. Make sure to use underscore in place of space while entering all file names to avoid any errors during the analysis run. Open the Optistruct tab. Set export options to all and run options to analysis. Click on Optistruct to launch the solver. Once the analysis is complete, we can view the results in Hyperview. Open the Contour tab. Set averaging method to simple and apply the element flux results. We can now see the heat flux distribution over the geometry. Let's change the numeric format of the legend to fixed. Similarly, we can view the element temperature gradient results. The grid temperatures can also be visualized to find the peak temperature in the model. We have successfully performed a steady state thermal analysis using Hypermesh and Optistruct and visualize the flux and temperature results. And this is how we can perform a steady state thermal analysis using Hypermesh and Optistruct. If you like this video, please hit the red subscribe button and give a thumbs up, it helps a lot. Make sure to follow me on social media to stay updated about latest video content. Thanks for watching.